Hey guys, welcome back to another Sell with Manuel vlog. Today is one hell of a long day. Um, I It's 8.27 right now in the morning and I am headed over to a listing appointment that I have in Mission Hills. Um, I'm really looking forward to this one. I've been talking to the seller now for, for a couple weeks now and uh, he doesn't live here, he lives up in LA, but he has um, he has this house, uh, It's I haven't seen it, but he's mentioned to me that's a full teardown or uh, an investment opportunity. So I'm looking forward to this one. I'm meeting up with him today, uh, this morning at 9 a.m. And then from there, I have a, um, a business planning uh, for 2022 with my team. So uh, ever since I started a team, and I've been part of teams where, where they do business planning come December and they business plan, you know, they take two, three days um, in December and they plan out all their 2022. So that's something that that I learned from a, a real estate group that I was with and I want to implement in my own group. So today we're going to have a, the 2022 business planning and we're going to map out all of 2022, what we should be doing, what works, social media, marketing. I'm going to have uh, Oscar Gastelum from um, he's a lender. Uh, I'm going to have him come in. He's going to talk to to us and the agents as well. I'm going to have uh, Sammy Belzner, which is a title. She's a title rep. She's going to be coming in. Um, so it's going to be a fun day. It's going to be a long day. I'm going to try and get as most of it uh, as I can on camera. Uh, but for today's uh, listing appointment, unfortunately, I can't bring the camera. It's a client that I've never met, so I just don't want to show up with a camera. Um, just respect a little bit of, of their privacy. But eventually, you know, um, I will show you guys the house and I'll do a full tour of the house and everything. Uh, so it, it's a fun day. It's a long day. Um, tomorrow, uh, which I'll bring you guys along with me as well. Tomorrow is day two of the business planning. So it's kind of like a, not, not a single day vlog, but a two day kind of vlog. So anyways, um, going to drive over to the listing appointment and then I'll bring you guys along with me for the uh, business planning. See you guys in a bit. me from you guys I think I don't see myself look I started this team not to to say oh I started a team I have a team right. um, so having said that I, I'm, I feel really grateful for you guys that you guys put your trust in me and kind of and I mean this is kind of like a startup to be honest yeah. uh, there's a learning curve it's the first time that I do something like this where I'm a, I'm a principal in a leadership in a leadership position within compass and so um, there's a there's there's a lot a lot of moving parts, but at the same time, I'm super excited uh, because it's we can do what what we want. Right. We can. There's no like checking in with anyone else uh, when it comes to the team. And I, you know, my expectation from you guys is really to, like you said, just put in the put in the work. Mm -hmm. um, in order to be successful in real estate, like you really have to put in the work. Like I know we see these shows, and trust me, I'm a big fan of like million dollar listing and all that shit. And yeah, we we want to get big commissions, but in no, order to get show you anything they don't show you anything <laughs> in order to get anything. there dude like it, it is i mean i call it uh doing the things where it's like you just do the things do your open houses do your follow-up do read your books like really uh, uh, pay attention to what you're doing and is it critical are you wasting time and that's what we're here for to help each other out and be like yo and be like uh, are you doing like what you're doing just wasting your time why don't you focus on this instead yeah um because i i i i live through it I, i've done through like dude when i got into real estate i went to berkshire hathaway and i had no direction and within seven months like i was fucking dry dude like i was running out of money i was like what the fuck like real estate sucks dude and i quit and so um and i and then when i came back to san diego i joined a team and it was a completely different <clears throat> view of real estate where it's like holy shit if you're a team if you're a part of something if you're growing uh, everyone all three of us together um it just it works a lot better um, or like you said, you can be a sounding board and be like, yo, Peter, what do you think of this? Mm -hmm. Yo, Manuel, what do you think of it? Hey guys, you know, I'm about to put this marketing piece. Do you think it's dope? Like, do, should I change anything? Is it right if I say this? There's certain things that, that can make you look unprofessional. There's other things where it's like, you know, more realistic. Like when it comes to, to doing your videos, like I like how you do your videos, mm -hmm. like super down to earth. You just shoot them in line and you're like, fuck yeah. 
Yeah. Um, your video was great that we filmed too. You didn't you didn't like how you were in the video, but oh um, yeah, I hated it. I hated <laughs> you, it. you were like hungover, so I completely <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like just doing these things, and that, that's what I kind of expect from you guys. Honestly, from this year, um, this twenty twenty one, most of my business came from social media. Why? Because I was literally doing like the video I recorded this morning. Just doing these small videos, dude, even on your way to work or on your way back, obviously if you don't show that you're going to work, be like, dude, I don't know, to an open house, whatever the case yeah, is. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's not it's not like I'm telling you like fake it till you make it type of thing, but it's like for people to be top of mind, for people to realize right. that, that you're in real estate. You post a lot of shit, like that's dope, dude. Like you've been posting more since, since I don't, I, maybe I noticed it more. Mm -hmm. um, like your open houses, the MS group, like shit like that, where it's like, oh shit, this, this dude's like on a team, this dude's right. in Compass, this dude's in real estate, that's right, I should call Peter. Right. And Peter's great at, like I was mentioning to you before he showed up, Peter's great at just like, just like building those like really good, good like relationships and you work your sphere very, very well. Like he's always on the phone and he's like, he's the type of person that, will, that you'll be like, you'll be like, oh, I have a friend, let me call him up. And you'll call him up like right now. Yo, what up, dude? And and, and you'll hear the conversation. Yeah. The dude's like, what up, Peter? It's been a long time. Or like, dude, yeah, what's yeah, up? Yeah. And, and he's he's like that. He's, yeah. He's a go-getter. He may, and I think I even told you, I'm like, he may not, his CRM may have zero people, but his internal CRM yeah, has like, has all a, yeah. he has yeah. it all up yeah. here. Okay. So every, everyone is different. There's no like cookie cutter, like this is one going to work. But I'll tell you then, and like mark my words, like dude, if you do the things that like, that we're going to talk about in the next day and two days, um, dude, you'll, you'll get business. You'll get listings. You'll get buyers. Like it's just a matter of just being there and being present. And social media, I mean, shoot, we have the biggest fucking reach with social media. And like I said, I've gotten most of my listings and sellers from social media, which is crazy. It's amazing. 85% mm -hmm. of my business this year, 2021, came from Instagram. That's insane. That's came from awesome. Instagram. And guess what? I didn't spend a single dollar on like promoting anything, anything, dude. It's just a matter of hashtags, uh, being there, posting pictures. And I'm not talking about um, also when it comes to social media, just be aware that don't post everything about real estate. People want to know who you are. Yeah. Um, people want to know what you do for fun. And obviously don't post shit like getting drunk out like no. on a Friday night. Um, but you can be like, I'm out here with friends. We're visiting this cool bar. Whatever the case is. Just don't take shots on fucking camera. Yeah. Um, but show, like, you show a lot, of, a, a lot of shit that like skiing and like traveling and you love airplanes, which yeah. I had no idea you love so much. Yeah. Um, uh, it, you you can do a lot of family. You like going to Disneyland. I do. I put it on. I'm a Disney. I know yeah. Disney fan. So you can be like, <laughs> yeah. Yo, what happened in Disney? Did yeah. you know Disneyland secrets? Like, dude, did you know that you could do this when it comes to Disneyland? Yeah. By the way, I found a loophole in Disneyland. The rider switch. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea it existed. Yeah, you can do that. It's, it's and you it's can like probably the do best it thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, just being that's you just what, cut rights. <laughs> yeah, you, oh, that's you, awesome. you yeah. cut the whole line. Yeah. It's um, amazing. Yeah. We can talk about it later. But, uh, <laughs> but what I expect from you guys is just being present, um, doing something every day that will lead you closer to, to getting a listing or, or getting a buyer or just posting something. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not telling you to post two, three times a day, but like at least something during the week where it's like something real estate related, something like for example, in my Instagram, I try to do like two personal posts and then one real estate related or two real estate and then one personal. So it kind of makes a match. I hate agents who have like, oh, my business bro, nobody fucking wants to see houses every single day. No. Mm -hmm. Nobody. But if you sprinkle a little bit of houses, you sprinkle a little bit of your personal life, what you do, golf, skiing, planes, whatever, family, Disney, they're going to be like, oh shit, I can relate to this guy. Mm -hmm. He has three kids. He goes to Disneyland. He likes to sell houses. Dude, that's dope. So, um, so anyway, that's kind of what I expect from you guys. Like I said, I'm really grateful for you guys to have joined the team, to be here, to kind of put your trust in me and, and moving forward. I really consider this like the startup group. And like I also anyone that you want to add on to the team or anyone that I find, I, I want to run it through you guys and you guys, you know, because we have to work well together. Sure. All of us. But I just want to have fun with you guys and just make a shit ton of money. So yeah. that's that's really what I expect from you guys being there, being present, um, and honestly, <coughs> push, push, pushing the team. The more sure. we push it, the more people know, um, the more we're gonna get more business. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the listing side, I plan to put one of you on every listing that I get. Um, and then when it comes to the listing, if you guys have a listing, I'd love to be on it, mm -hmm. and I'd love to review 
Uh, even though it's your clients, I'm never gonna like take away your clients. It's your clients. I just want to review like kind of if you're submitting offers, if you're a <coughs> listing agreement like that. Um, just so so we can kind of be on point and be on the same page <coughs> as what we're you know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So um, if you guys are thinking about submitting an offer, run it by me. Like show it to me before you even submit it. I have also uh, presenting offers. I have a whole email where it looks super fucking professional, dude. And I've gotten offers accepted because of it. Nice. Because it's like super detailed, super professional. And they fucking an agent. Dude, I've been on the listing side. And it's like you get, sometimes you get the sloppiest fucking mm -hmm. offers. And you're like, oh my God, I can only imagine <laughs> what you're going to be like during escrow. Yeah. Right, yeah. So um, we have to be really professional, clean, uh, precise. And uh, like I said, just have fun with it. But if you're pushing the team... Hashtag MS group, um, MS group, MS group, or MSGRP. Got it, okay. Um, like, just have fun with it, um, push it, and if you have anyone who wants to join the team, I'm looking to add two more. That's it, I just want a team of five for now. Um, and if you add, I think I, you haven't seen it yet, but you have. If you add anyone on the team, the first five deals, you get 10% off their deal. Nice. Okay. So, um, that's just something, and of course, if you bring them in, um, um, I'll talk to them, you talk to them, we'll, we'll talk to them. If they fit the team and if they fit like our, what we have going on, then, then they'll join. Awesome. Cool? Yeah. So Sounds awesome. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Any questions? I saw Oscar walking by. It's right here. Dope, man. You guys excited? I'm excited. You guys I fucking am. pumped? I am fucking pumped. Dude, oh my god. You're going to make you laugh. I thought I was texting with the agent. <laughs> that, that listing I sent you that I'm going to do an open house on. Remember yeah, I was like, oh, like that listening. You're like, yeah, it's dope. Yeah, <laughs> guess who? The fuck, guess who I was texting? Who? The girl of our La Jolla open house. No, I'm doing that open house on Sunday. No, which is fucking dope, by the way. I mean, it's sick. Man. Yeah, I think that's sold. No, they have multiple offers, but nothing accepted yet. Okay. So I she's like, why? Like, why haven't they accepted an offer? They, they, they did come? multiple counter. Oh, they just want to keep that on the market. Yeah. Got yep, it. for sure. So let me bring Oscar in. Well done. Oscar. What's going on? Hey, guys? Oscar. Hey, one of the top are? lenders in San Diego. How are you? Good, man. How are you? Good, good. I like good. that blazer. Oh, uh, thank you, man. The protocol essentially is like partnering up with you guys because most of the work we're going to be doing essentially is from pre approval to contract, mm. right? And most people think that a lot of the work is done, at least from the lending side, right? Because you guys do all the showings and offer, 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 offer. Then we go to contract and it's kind of like you pass the ball and everyone else takes over. Right. Well, a lot of that with us is, like I said, from pre-approval to contract. So the question is, what does that look like, right? As far as like, how do you do the handoff? Because I can tell you that that's the biggest thing. Where you, whether you guys do it to us or to anyone, I can tell you how you do a handoff to a lender makes a world of difference. Versus just saying like, hey, um, you know, call this guy and see what they can offer you, right? You just position that person as a salesperson. Sure. What's going to happen is if you ask 10 people, the same question, you're going to get 10 different answers, it's going to confuse the heck out of your client. You have to be able to partner up with someone that's like-minded, running a business like you, and is going to provide the value that your clients need. I can tell you right now, the fundamentals are lending, any good loan officer knows them. That's FHA, VA, conventional, high balance, and jumbo, right? And then you can throw in some like non-QM stuff. Do you like that piece, by the way? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think I thought it really broke yeah, down. I had, I had lenders reach out to me. <laughs> Really? Like, oh, what, what, what? Yeah, like, oh, and they try, try to explain it them, themselves. Yeah. And I was like, oh, dude, it's fine. I got it. <laughs> we'll go into that later yeah. as far as like, what that is. Um, but the fundamentals is those five things, right? So in the handoff more is position yourself, yes, as a real estate advisor, but you have to know some fundamentals of lending. You know, you and I were talking about that as, as a realtor, right? So our goal, my goal is always to kind of pour into you guys and saying, if I were a realtor, what about what of lending do I need to know? And that's what I really try to pour in. So when you're qualifying your client, right? Because you need to decide if you're going to hire that client as much as they're going to hire you. Right. You have to look at it that way. Um, asking some key component, components, right? You find out the motivation of the client, right? Like what are your time frames? What's the time you do those front time frames? How'd you come up with those time frames? It's important in conversation to kind of find out what they do. Right? If someone says, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a principal at the school, yeah, a principal, not the principal, a principal at the school district and, you know, light needs to go off and I got, that could be a, a whole new avenue of business for you guys as well, right? right. Um, and then gauging down payment. 
A lot of times people say like, oh, I don't like asking that question. That's a long and under question. I'm like, you can get a listing out of that. Sure. Yeah. I've had that happen where someone's like, oh, they get excited to kick over someone to me. And I'm talking to them like, oh, we're going to put about 20 to 30% down. I'm like, great. Where's that money coming from? Well, I have a rental and I'm planning to sell. Perfect. Right? I'm like, oh, have you spoken to Courtney, the realtor, right? In this case, uh, about that. They're like, no. I'm like, okay, well, I'll make that conversation, right? Um, but really kind of finding out because that gives us a gauge of the type of consumer we're dealing with. And just because it's a first time buyer doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go with three, four, even five, 10% down. They can have the assets to do that. So I'm always going to be the point of contact. As I have a team, but I'm always the point of contact. The way we're set up is Courtney's kind of like my, my right hand woman, right? In a sense, meaning when I'm not available, she's the one typically responding to the client whether she's just kind of like answering them the one-on-one -on -one questions and kind of putting them on loop water for me until I get back to them because I can be like here, right? Um, but I'll talk to the client, I'll do what we call the initial consultation and that's just conversational. I can literally be doing that sitting over there in my car, anywhere. I don't have to like set up an appointment. I right. literally try to time block uh, a time to talk <laughs> to them. Um, and with that, like I always said, you know, setting up that time block. So, hey, when are you available? Oh, I'm available in the afternoons. Great, kind of give me a gauge. Oh, I'm available between five and eight. Great, I'll check with Oscar. I'll make a text introduction, right? And see he's available. Versus saying, hey, he'll call you at five. I can already have a five o'clock. We're already off to the wrong track. Right. Saying like, hey, what's your time frame? Five to eight, great. Let me check with Oscar, right? Make sure he's available to call you within that time. If you do the introduction, hey, Oscar, this is Tom. Tom, this is Oscar. Uh, Oscar, Tom's available uh, this afternoon between five and eight, are you available to call within that time? I'll say, perfect, great, I'll call you at seven. Boom, the time is set, we're not going back and forth. It's introduction, response, you lock in the time. The expectation is set. By the time I talk to him, I'll say, great, here's my contact information, um, be prepared, we'll chat for about 20 minutes, right? If you guys say those 20 minutes, that sets the standard as well, why? Because I don't wanna to talk to him and they're trying to get me off the phone in five minutes. Yeah, I got five minutes, what do you got? Right that's not gonna get me anywhere, right? So it's like, hey, we need about 12 minutes, this is a good time, right? I'll end up getting, basically I'm filling out a, a verbal 1003. I mean, I know the thing like the back of my hand, right? So it's like, I ask some key questions that's gonna better gauge. I let them know what that conversation is gonna sound like. Hey, I'm gonna, I'll give you the streamlined version. Hey, I'm gonna ask you a few questions. If everything makes sense, um, then we'll have you fill out the application, we'll pull credit, and then we'll kind of talk about what the pre-approval process looks like. So it's not like, hey, they talked to me, am I pre-approved, sure. right? They need to understand it's a process. After I talk to them, I say, great, you know, Tom, everything looks good. It looks like everything's in line. You know, if they're thinking they want a, you know, $4,000 mortgage and kind of what their appetite is aesthetically versus what I think they qualify for. I say, great, look, everything's in line. Um, let's do this. Either myself or Courtney will be sending you an email, right? Why do I say that? Because I can literally be on my way to an appointment that's gonna lock me down another hour and a half. I don't lose that time. I can call Courtney in two minutes and say, hey, send this client this email, boom, boom, boom. The email goes out. And Wait. that email is for to fill out an application, right? The application yeah. online. So the link, um, and we can send it to you guys so you can see what it looks like. Super user friendly. Um, I wanna put you on my website as well where you can get pre-approved through, through my website. And honestly, that's the best thing to do. Okay. Right? Yeah. Versus saying, hey, go to oscarmortgage.com and fill out the application. <clears throat> You can say, hey, you know, um, when you get a chance, go to manuelsanchez.com, yeah. right? I don't know your domain, but, and there's a link there to apply. You're driving traffic to your site. So just put the widget on there, and literally they click on it, it takes them to the site. Which, which um, we, we, we changed the domain to the msgrp.com, and it says on there, like, how much can I afford? And it runs a little bit of, like, the keywords, and then at the bottom it says, get pre-approved today, and then yeah. I'll put, I'll link up your website there. Mm -hmm. And that way it goes directly to him. But like Oscar said, the more information we can get out of the buyer, the better, the more professional we'll look. Where it's like, what do you do? What are your goals when it comes to real estate? Are you looking to buy like ASAP? Or are you looking to buy before the end of the year? Like, what you know, what do you do for a living? All that stuff. You don't need to know how much they make because right. that's that's where they come in. But the more uh, information we get from them, the more professional we look. And that way, when, when we make the introduction, Oscar doesn't have to ask those. We can be like, yo, Oscar, this is what they do. This is who they are. This is what they work for. Whatever the case is. Um, and that way, he'll be like, 
easier. It's kind of like, you know when you go to the doctor and the nurse walks into the room and she asks you like all these key questions, uh -huh. right? She yeah, gives exactly, that information yeah. to the doctor and the doctor right. comes in. Yeah. In, this, in this case, I'm the doctor because I'm going to diagnose him, right? right. You're just gathering that. data, but that data you're going to use as well, right? Income, you're not going to go into income, but if someone says, hey, you know, we're both, both nurses, okay, well, there's a good chance that they're making anywhere between, what, 80 to 150? Um, I wanted to bring in Sammy just, you know, for the whole team. <clears throat> For, well, number one to meet her, you already you had already known her, but um, for Navi to meet uh, Sammy, and um, just kind of a, a run through of kind of what Title does um, and what she can help us out with when it comes to the dynamic farming, um, what kind of ideas she she has, you know, to reach out to uh, potential sellers, which is the number one thing that we're looking for. Um, so Sammy's yeah, on. absolutely. How long have you been licensed? Uh, for about three years now. Nice, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, in a gist, obviously, like, everyone is always like, what is title? You know, I mean, no one ever really knows what title is. Um, so I forget, like, every, like, three months, I'm like, what is title? <laughs> like, like, what is this big fee <laughs> on the breakdown? Yeah. You know. Um, so basically, what title does is make sure that there's no liens or judgments on the house. So anytime you get a signed listing agreement, I always say, the second you get a sign, let us open the prelim and take a look at what's going on on the property. Especially nowadays when you have such quick escrows, you don't know what could pop up. And let's say there's a ton of liens and judgments. You've experienced that firsthand on some mm -hmm. of your stuff. Um, at least we can get started on it and there's no surprises. Mm -hmm. There can be surprises along the way, but this kind of prevents most of them. So we get started on it. Anything can get attached to a house. Child support lien, solar lien, um, judgments, you name it. Anything can really attach to the property. Um, we are part of Fidelity, which is the world's largest title company. Um, so we're not going anywhere. If there's a downturn mm -hmm. or anything like that, yeah. we've got the financial backing, um, which is great. So Fidelity is a huge monopoly. They own Lawyer's Title, Chicago, Tycor, and Fidelity. So they own all the major players besides First American. Um, we have all the same underwriters. Our title officer, obviously I'm pretty biased because I work for the company, but she honestly is the best around. Like, we'll come up with ways to get the deal done. Like. We're very creative. We'll take deals that our sister companies won't take. Um, we're willing to take the risk. I'm never going to be like, hey, there's no way to go unless the property is like landlocked or something just ridiculous that no one can insure. Um, we will always give you a way to go. Like we've had some where like the demands come in late for some of these liens, and obviously you've got buyers who are like, listen, we got loan loss extensions. Like we we got to get this done. We got to get it closed. We'll hold funds just to get it done. And just get the deal done so we're always coming up with creative ideas if you ever run into a snag call me and okay. i'm kind of the middleman <coughs> between the title officer he never really talks to the title officer he always will talk to me right. um every time you open up a title report you'll get a full review i'm going to point out any red flags and we can always do a prelim class i know we talked about that mm -hmm. on how to read a title report in case you ever want to look at them um and we can definitely do that and read a title report with you guys um, and then I'll give you a full review of all the red flags, what to look out for, things like that. Um, as far as like, where your go-to as for anything on the property. If you need permits, zoning, height restrictions, anything, we can supply all that to you. Um, building records, um, a lot of times you'll be like, hey, is this garage permitted or the pool or whatever it may be. Come to me, I'll get it for you. Okay, so cool, cool. that's kind of what we do in a gist. Um, that's the, um, the book I have that you guys have in front of you. Um, I put a quote up there where it says, take care of the work and the work will take care of you. Dude, I 100,000% believe in that. Where it's like, dude, if you do the things and you take care of your business, because we're all 1099 employees, but we're part of the group. But if we take care of the business, dude, and the work, it'll take care of us. Like we can make ridiculous amounts of money if we just do the things that you know, open houses, all of that shit, dude. <sighs> all right. Looks like nobody cleaned up the trash last night. Cool. <laughs> all right. Day two. Um. A little bit of the uh, schedule for today. We kind of already settled in, icebreaker. We're not doing battle books today um, because we finished them off yesterday. But I want to open it up like discussion as to, just so we can work a little bit better. 
Um, kind of like, what do you, what do you don't like? What don't you like about real estate? What do you like? What do you feel like your strengths are, your weaknesses? Um, and that way we can work just better with each other. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you don't like open houses and he does. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I can, I can go off first. Um, for example, I, I feel like I'm super attracted and super like focused when I get listings. Listing is my like super strong point because um, I love I love marketing. I love doing videos like this. I like the whole flyering, uh, the open houses, and when it's my listing, it's like I feel like a brick and mortar store. Like mm -hmm. everyone's coming to me. I don't care if it's a seller's market or a buyer's market. I'll market the shit out of that house, and I enjoy it very very much. And it's funny because I, I when I started in real estate and I started doing open houses, I ran into more listings and buyers, which is crazy. Um, but I, I, you know, that's kind of my forte, like listings. Um, when it comes to stuff that I like, I like doing open houses. I hate doing phone calls. I can't stand it. I don't like doing door knocking either. I'll fly her all day, but I won't door knock like, hey, this is my house. Yeah, like, sorry to yeah. interrupt your dinner. Yeah. Do you want yeah, to sell your house? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, it, I, I put myself in their position and it goes back to empathy where it's like, how would I want to be approached as a home seller or as a homeowner? How would I want to be approached to sell my house or to buy a house? Like, I can guarantee you, like, dude, if someone comes knocking on my door, I, it, I, won't, I will have like less than 1% chance I will use them. Um, because everyone knows a realtor. Like, why should... 100%. Like, why should they go with a dude knocking on the door? Right. No, keep in mind, there's some dudes that, there's some people that don't know realtors. You know, I've run across them where it's like they have no clue. And most of those people are like first time home buyers. Maybe they just got married. Right. Um, and that's another thing for me, home, first time home buyers is dope. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I love this whole process of, of, uh, of educating them uh, through the buying process. And it's like, it's a sit down where it's, we'll sit down and we're going to role play later on that. But I, I love working with first-time home buyers. They're super open-minded. Um, they're scared, and they want their hand held through the whole process. So it's something yeah. that I really enjoy. Um, but now that it's that that I've advanced a little bit more, it's like there's just some people where it's not that I won't work with them. I'll work with everyone. I don't care what the price point is. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start a team also, where I could be like, Yo, Naveed, you know, here's a buyer. Here's a five hundred thousand dollar buyer. Like, go for it. Help him out. This is the situation. And by then, I've already told the buyer, like, hey, I have a team. Navid's going to be reaching out. I'm going to hand you off to him. But I'm going to re be reviewing everything. So, and that comes to, like, uh, we spoke about it yesterday where it's, like, every every offer that you're submitting, I want to I, I want to review it. Every listing, like, all that stuff, I want to review it just to make sure everything looks good. It's not that I don't trust you guys. I know you guys have been in the business long enough where you've written offers and you've had listings. But it's just a matter of, like, Checking off. Yeah, it never has yeah. a second set of eyes on yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and me personally, sometimes I'm like, I'll write it and I'll double check it, double check it, and I might run it through someone else. Yeah, I'm like, Yo, absolutely. I'm like, I'm so like into it that you sometimes miss shit. Like the littlest shit. And, yeah. and the thing is, they're, they're, they're constantly changing the RPA, and they're constantly changing the the RLA and it's you're like holy shit like every time is new they literally I think next week they're changing the um, the RPA which they're having a class here for for us okay. um, I think it's all I think they're gonna be recording it too so you can see it online um, but anyways that's me that's kind of what my business is all about is about meeting new people open houses listings and very like dude I love listings and I crush listings and I crush listing appointments I don't know what it is but I feel so confident walking into a listing appointment and I'm like it's like, dude, I got this. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And so if you guys have listing appointments, um, and you like, Hey dude, can you, can you come with me? I'm more than happy to go with you. Mm -hmm. Obviously you're, you're the main dude and I'm like pumping you up yeah. at, in the meeting. And I'm like, dude, Navid's a shit when it comes to listings. I'm not going to jump in and, and be like, Oh yeah, let me, Navid, I got this yeah, yeah, yeah. because <laughs> you essentially got it. They liked you first and, and who knows? I mean, I, I, I worked with a mentor before where I brought him along to a listing appointment and I know for a fact we didn't get it because of him. I know for a fact that we didn't sucks. get it because of him. Oh, the crap. dude jumped in and he was all like super like pushy strong like, and I was like, oh shit. And they didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And they pushed back and we didn't get the listing. 
That sucks. I know for a fact that if I would have walked in there by myself, by yeah. Um, thing was that I was like, hey, it was one of my first listing appointments, and I was like, uh, can you come with me? And he was like, yeah, sure. And he walked in, like, just com- to complete to control. Thing, yeah. yeah. And that dudes were like, we kind of called you. Who is this guy? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so when it comes to, if you want to bring me on, let's just let them know ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Be like, hey, I'm going to bring on, you know, uh, my team leader. And uh, this dude crushes it. And uh, we're going to be working together. Yeah. That's it. Or you, you could be like, hey, I'm going to bring someone on my team. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to say team leader. So, yeah. so it makes you look even, even hey, I'm going to bring someone on my team who's going to be reviewing everything. He's going to be working with us. And uh, just for a second set of eyes. Mm-hmm. Cool? Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Nobody will ever tell you like, no, no don't bring yeah. them. Ask them be like, hey, why aren't you selling your, your, your current house? We can buy two homes with that, you know, if yeah, you sell that yeah. one. Oh, well, we want to rent. Well, I'm, and you can be up front and be like, hey, renting a, it, a great strategy. Obviously, it's a good play. Not right now because of COVID and like yeah. the COVID moratorium, but you could you could tell them and be upfront and be like, just keep in mind that renting, most of the renters will destroy your house. And whatever you make, let's say you make, you know, $30,000, you know, off that rental a year, like more than likely you're going to end up putting back into the house at least half of that back into it when they move out because your walls are going to get destroyed like if they have kids or dogs like forget about it carpet you're gonna have to do a whole bunch of stuff i rented a house for um for a client of mine for a little under a year and he had to put in seventeen thousand dollars into a house after they left they had a dog they never told us they had a dog he chewed off through like the doors like and the dude was a youtuber and he painted walls and it was it was a mess dude and so just tell your clients, be upfront, be like, hey, renting's great. It's great passive income. But um, just keep in mind that most renters don't take care of the house. So have that in mind that, that if once they move out, you're going to have to put money into a house, bring it back up to speed if you want to list it. Yeah. Why don't we try out the market? Why don't we put it on the market for two months, three months? See where it goes. What do you, what do you want for the house? No, I want this. Much. Okay, maybe the market's not there yet. But, you know, I could find a renter for your current house. And if, if they want to rent it, you can be like, dude, I'll, I'll put it on the market for you. I won't manage it because we're not, we're not property yeah. managers. We don't have, we're not licensed to be property managers. Plus, you don't want to, you don't do want to deal with that. Yeah. Renting, renting is 10 times harder than selling a home, dude. Renting, there's so much when it comes to renters because essentially you're not transferring any property to any yeah. buyer. Once you do that, it's like you're done. Okay. With renting, it's... Dude, I just had a rental and the contract is like super tricky. You have to be very careful what you put in there. This with um, with the listing uh, presentations. Mm-hmm. I typically in listing presentations and CMAs don't. What the fuck? I know I saw them there over there. It's like oh, a wow. fairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude. Oh my god. That's gonna show what we're seeing. What the? Dude, what is There's that? There's two of them. There's another one right there. I think over there. What the hell? You must be having some sort of event or something, dude. That looks this freaky as hell. This was having an event freaky. yesterday. I think they're having another one over here, too. That looks freaky as hell. Oh, yeah, I, look at this one running. Yeah, I told you there's two. Oh, dude, yeah. that was running. What the <laughs> Wow. Dude, that's dope. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is with. I don't know what it is with that building, but they have the craziest events, dude. They do. Is, I know. Is this um, just one company? Or no, no, no. no. Like I know Deloitte different. is in that building, which I don't know if you've heard about Deloitte. It's like top five hundred like companies in the world. They do a whole bunch of shit, dude. Um, and then Cushman, the um, property management, property management, mm-hmm. and uh, property sales is in that building, dude. They. I've had, I've seen DeLoreans parked out front. I've seen like some crazy parties. And in the summer, those big doors, they all pop open, dude. Oh yeah, they open up. um, I saw it open yesterday. Yep. Doors, I use this for a lot of, well, not a lot, but the buyers that I've had, I use this where it's like you can set up a whole, and I'll print one of these Mm -hmm. for each one of them. And it'll literally be like, cool, we're showing, I'm showing them five properties today. Hey guys, here's your book. And they'll be like, oh shit, this is sick. And they'll open it and be like, oh, property number one. Oh, shit. And you can, you can Google map them to be time efficient. And they'll be like, visit this first, this first, instead of you're not running around all over the map. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And they'll be like, you give, I usually give them this and a, and, a, and a pen attached to it. And they can write in the notes. Ah, oh, I didn't like this house because of this. I didn't like whatever it is. 
and they'll they'll have everything on there. Sometimes you visit so many homes, they forget. They, they, no, yeah, that they, even they're like, lot. how many square feet is this? And you're like, oh, uh, I don't oh, know. Yeah, let me yeah, let me take a look. And yeah. you're like, this is what house is this? And you're like, shit. Dude, if you have a book, a copy, you're like, I don't know, let's take a look. So, hey guys, we just showed up. This house is like, it's 23,000 square feet. They have a list for 530, and it's been in the market for two days. So, I mean, I'm guessing there's a lot of people looking at this, or it's been in the market for 40 days. So, let's take a look at, let's, let me ask the, the agent what's going on with it. Why it hasn't been sold? Um, and you have everything, so you make a copy. All right, guys, next up is 811 Applewood Drive. I'll meet you guys over there. Mm -hmm. Cool, and they know everything on here. It's not like sometimes, dude, before this, I was like, hey, next address is this, and I'll meet you guys oh, there, yeah, and yeah. let me, and, and let's do that, like, send you yeah. yeah, and that way, I'll just, dude, I'll get in my car and take off, because I don't want him following me either, it's like, I don't know if I'm driving too slow yeah, or too fast, yeah. so it's like, it's kind of awkward. Hey, what's up? Hey! How are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. Yeah, it's been, uh, I know we've been texting back and forth and phone calls, but finally in person. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I see all your uh, posts. I love seeing uh, you showing property. I'm excited to check out property with you, go look at some things. Thanks, um, man. Thank you. Like, I, I love this stuff. And, you know, just a little bit about, about me before we get started. I've been in this business for, for over three years. And I live and breathe this stuff. I love real estate and I do this day in, day out. And that's why I'm here meeting with you and I have, you know, I, I've worked with extensive uh, buyers and, and sellers and I really enjoy the process. And that's why I am. I was born and raised here in San Diego. Oh, cool. Um, I currently uh, work at Compass in Del Mar. We have a great company there and we have a lot of uh, reach when it comes to our brokerage. Okay. Have you heard of Compass? So I have heard of Compass. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, I'm from Colorado and they just opened up a new office. So oh, I've seen sick. them. Yeah, I just yeah. saw. What part of Colorado? I grew up in the mountains, so I grew up in Vail. So wow. it's just opened up a, a pretty cool office and uh, it's the newest brokerage. So I, I pass by, it's at a great location. So that's how I know of Compass. That's but, dope. Yeah. I've been skiing in Vail, it's sick, dude. Do you yeah. ski? I, I snowboard, but yeah, I, I love I don't that. Know. I've never been into snowboarding. Really? Yeah. It's uh, it, it definitely takes some pain to learn it, but it's, it's a quick, Quick learning curve. Definitely. That's cool. Yeah, I, I was planning to go to Vail this year, but it didn't happen. Um, but maybe next year. Who knows? Yeah. Well, yeah. when you go, let's go up on the hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like your watch, by the way. It's cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Where'd no, you get that from? So this was a gift from my dad, actually. Um, wow. Yeah. I, so it's I like watches, too. That's sick. Yeah, I noticed it. It's like, I'm into watches. I noticed it. I'm like, ah, oh, this, this guy's wearing a nice watch. He's, he should be into watches. Yeah, it yeah. It looks like, you know, that's a, that's a nice watch. It's something you should cherish. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, I think uh, more than anything, it's a sentimental value. You yeah. know, I thought, yeah, I love watches. I, I love yours, by the way. I oh, thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks. Awesome. The yeah. sub. That one's impossible to get. I know that. Ah, uh, there's that. You can always get, you can always get watches. It's cool. But anyways, <laughs> tell me, you know, you, you reached out, you said you were looking to buy a house. Yeah. Tell me kind of where you're at in, 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 in the search. Sure. So have, never, you, have you just started to look or is it something that, that, you know, tell me a little bit. So just super unfamiliar with the process. Like I've never bought a home, but like, you know, you watch these TV shows, you're like, hey, I, I mean, it, it gets you kind of excited to go yeah. buy a home, right? And you think you understand the process, but then like you start like, God, I don't know the process at all. Like, I guess I should talk to somebody that sells real estate, right? Yeah. So like... Um, I don't kind of know where to begin. I know like look, you know, look at um, properties kind of in an area that I like, but then I don't know like how much I should be able to yeah. afford. Like, I, so I need a loan. I do have, you know, um, some are you, cash do you, to put down. Do you, are you, do you currently own or you're renting? Right now I'm renting. Okay. And I've only Correct. ever rented. So I currently right now I'm in downtown. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, so you like you want to stay within downtown? I want to stay within downtown. I think okay. uh, I just like the walkability um, right now, you know. I'm young. I don't have kids. I don't right. have a family, and I like bars, restaurants. Yeah, around exactly. There. Yeah. yeah, it's just kind of a fun area to be. I'm a pretty social person, so I don't see myself in like the suburbs at all. So I think that like so you want to stay within downtown. You're, totally. you're essentially you're you're looking for a condo, not a single family. Right. Exactly. And, I, and, and by the way, we have a we have a Compass office in downtown. So, oh, cool. So yeah. Oh, you do. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah, that's that's good to know. Cool. So, so you know you know the downtown area. Yeah. Um. You know, for me, it's just I, I would like a two bedroom. I sometimes I have you, when you live in San Diego, everybody wants to come see you, right? So I want like a two bedroom. Um, you know, as far as like location, I I don't want to be in East Village. I rented over there years ago, and it's still not. It's up and coming, but yeah, you could get a little bit more. Like currently, the market you can get a little bit more bang for your buck in East sure. Village. 
Um, it's, you know, eventually downtown, the way it's growing, mm -hmm. eventually, you know, East Village will be up and coming. I agree. Um, it's slowly getting there. Sure. But because of COVID, I mean, you were probably stuck in your, your condo during COVID. Right. So um, a lot of people left downtown. Sure. Which brings me to my next thing where it's, it's a great time to buy in, in downtown. Right. Because of so many people leaving. Uh, many people want a backyard, they want a pool, they want a, an extra bedroom. Right. And that's stuff that you don't really get in downtown. Mm -hmm. But someone, you know, young people, they like to stay there because of the bar scene, uh, the bars, the, the restaurant scene. And it's, I mean, shoot, if I was single, I, I want to live there. Yeah, right. Uh, but East Village, is, you know, it's, it's up and coming. So depending on where you want to be, your price point, where you want to be at. Sure. Um, we can take a look at not just downtown, but surrounding areas. Okay. But um, but tell me kind of where, where are you thinking when it comes to, to price? So I, I think that I've just kind of run like a mortgage like calculator okay. and just kind of figured out like, Good. Yeah, yeah, which is like nice. So you've right? been like, looking yeah, at been like looking, okay. Well, you know, with these these you know Zillow and everything, it kinda of helps you yeah. gauge, you know, how much you can afford, at least gives you a snapshot. So like what I'm paying in rent is equivalent to like having a mortgage of right around like one point two to one point three million. Got it. Um I have like twenty percent down on that if I need you know, if need be. I okay. mean I've never bought a home before, um, so I've heard like you should probably have like twenty percent down. Right. So you know, were you are have you been in the military? No. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. No, they wouldn't have me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good thing for our country that yeah. I was in the military. As a matter of fact, I don't know. You seem like a good guy. Why wouldn't they have you? You seem like a great guy. Um, so let me let me run you a little bit about uh, let me tell you about the process of, of buying a home. Okay. Um, so there's there's steps to it. Um, okay. And, and I like to, to kind of lay it out on the table and we have to start with step one, which is getting your pre-approval. Okay. Like I can go out and show you properties, no problem, but mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense because we don't know what you're, what you're pre-approved for. Sure. That mortgage calculator that you're talking about, mm -hmm. it doesn't know how much you make, right? how much you owe. Um, so step number one would be uh, to discuss all your financials with the lender. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you and him will discuss. Okay. So everything's, you know, privacy is key. Um, he, I don't need to know any of, uh, of what you discuss with him and he won't share with me. If you feel comfortable, we can all have a, you know, a conversation, sure. sit down. We can meet here at the office or have a zoom call and go over it then. Okay. But he's going to be the first step. Okay. So what a mortgage lender does is he'll look at your finances. He'll look at how much you make and how much you owe. So it's called a debt to income ratio. Mm -hmm. Um, essentially they, they want, obviously you have to qualify it. So they don't want, if you're making a hundred thousand dollars and you owe $200,000, so it just doesn't make sense. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone has a number in mind, okay. but until you, until we discuss it with a lender, he'll give us a real answer. And like I said, I can show you homes tomorrow. No problem. I wouldn't have an issue with it. But again, it's like going shopping without your wallet. So it's like you're, you're right. In, yeah, it's like you're, point. So let's say you're in the mall and you see a good pair of shoes and you're like, shoot, I want to buy those shoes, but you forgot your wallet at home. So right. you need to go back to your wallet, grab, go, go back home, grab it, come back. By the time you come back, th those shoes are gone. Yeah, the way the, 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 like the way that. the market is at right now, it's like homes are just flying off the shelf. Right. So as you know, as you are well aware of, you've probably read now that you're jumping into the buyer pool is that it's very, very competitive. Sure. So just to, to lay it out there, we might not get an offer accepted first, second, third offer we put in. Uh, it just depends on, on how aggressive we are with the offers mm -hmm. and we'll get to the offer situations once we get there. But like I said, the step number one would be get pre-approved. Now you're not built, you're not military, so you wouldn't be getting a, a VA loan. No. Um, there's other loans on the table. The most uh, common ones are FHA and uh, conventional loans. Um, so FHA is less money down, but you'll have a, uh, a bigger uh, interest rate. And then um, conventional is more money down and you have a lower interest rate. Okay. And that's stuff that we'll discuss with Oscar. Oscar is my preferred lender that I work with. Um, he's insanely good. Okay. Um, if you feel comfortable working with him and you connect well with him, that'd be awesome. Um, if not, I have other lenders that I can introduce you to. Cool. Um, if you want to go through your bank, you're more than welcome to. Look, at the end of the day, when it comes to interest rates, they're all going to be very similar. Right. You might, you might end up getting a better rate at your bank, but you just won't get the service. So okay. literally, they, you know, they get paid by the hour. So right. they work nine to five. So if you want to reach them after hours, there's no way you're going to reach them. And if you want to reach them during the weekend when we're out looking at property and submitting offers, it's almost impossible to reach yeah. them. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, you're, you're more than welcome to, to explore and kind of um, 
submit uh, uh, submit application and see which one gets you the better rate. But I know who works well, and I only work with prof professionals, or else I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here, or else yeah. I wouldn't recommend them to you. So sure. I have two or three lenders that I can I can definitely shoot out and make an introduction. We can start with one, and if you like them, we can go with them. Cool. Um, it's a very simple process. Um, he only needs like 30 minutes of your time and he will fill out an application online. You don't even have to meet him in person if you don't want to. I know cool. with everything COVID going on, like you just, you know, everyone's different. So that would be step number one. Once we get that out of the way, we'll get a pre-approval letter. So you said you want to be around a million dollars. That's something that you'll discuss with Oscar. Like, hey, I want to be a, a, around a million dollars. He'll get you pre-approved for whatever amount you're, you want to be. But essentially at the end of the day, he'll be like, hey, just an example, let's say, we're looking at homes for a million dollars, but he only pre-approves you for 800. So having said that, we have to look at homes up to 800,000. Right. Now the way the market's at, like I said, it's super competitive. If you're pre-approved up to 800,000, well, then we have to be looking at homes at 700,000. Right. So okay. just because sense. everyone's coming in above list price, waiving contingencies, and we'll go, I'll go over that with you later on down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, step number one is that. Once okay. we get that, then I'll start sending you properties and I can put you on a, um, on a uh, we call it a compass, the, um, it's, it's not a drip campaign, but it's a collections, we call it collections. Okay. And um, I'll start sending you properties so you get a good idea of what's out there, what's on the market okay. um, within downtown. Sound cool. good? That sounds great. Yeah. And if you see something on there, I mean, shoot, we can always take a look at it cool. once we get that pre-approval. Awesome. And it's, dude, yeah, the thing, uh, the concierge or the um, collections is awesome because you can see on there, it's kind of like Facebook. You can see on there, you can type, you can delete it off the list. And that's the list that I'm providing to you and oh, I'll cool. handpick all of them. Awesome. If you want, I can send you all of them. You just, I don't think you want to see like 40 properties every single day. No, no. Not, not that we have that many properties. I mean, the market right now is, is, is nuts. There's no inventory. Sure. And the little homes that do come, like the, 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 the homes that do come to market are just so sought after. Yeah. So for, yeah, for I can imagine. even in downtown, even though I'm saying that the everyone's, well, a lot of people are moving out of downtown, they're uh -huh. still very sought after. So for every, for every condo, I think that you get like 10 offers on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you, and the thing is you also get cash buyers. So sure. I just, you know, something to, to put on the table and to set expectations from the sure. building. But anyways, that's step number one. Step number two is looking at properties. Step number three would be going out and checking out those properties and submitting offers. Sure. So in step number three, we'll go out, we'll see him. If you say, Hey man, I like this property. Let's submit an offer. Then we'll go through that then. Now the offer is very simple. It's a standard uh, offer that, that we write here for, for California. And we can always change that offer however you like. We can offer you know, less, more, we can remove contingencies. Essentially on a purchase, you have three contingencies. You have the loan contingency, the uh, inspection contingency, and the appraisal contingency. Um, have, you, have you heard of these? Uh, uh, on HGTV. HGTV, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, probably heard, you probably heard him on like Million Dollar Listing where it's like, Oh, cash, no contingencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I didn't know what I knew there was contingencies. I didn't know what they were. So yeah. okay, that's good to know. Yeah. So um, depending on how, let's. I'll give you an example. If we see a condo that's five hundred thousand, we're coming in a hundred thousand dollars. That's something that my expertise of doing a um, a comparative market analysis of where condos are getting listed at and where they're selling. Okay. I'll give you my best advice to either remove appraisal. So an appraisal. Do you know what an appraisal is? Yeah, they tell you how much the home is valued. Right. right? So that's when I, it's the bank basically. Okay. So um, if we agree on an offer, our offer gets accepted, the bank goes out there and appraises the property. Got it. And that's what they think. They might think the property is worth what we're paying for, they might think it's less. But we'll, we'll run across that once we get there. Okay. Uh, for now, let's start with step number one. Um, what days work for you for uh, Oscar to, to reach out, or do you want me to start a tax? How, I would say, um, yeah, start a tax. I mean, I want to get get started fairly quickly. You know, I'm, yeah. I have that timeline where my lease is expiring. <clears throat> I feel like I should make a decision one way or another, renew or don't renew. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I'd love to, yeah, if you could get us on a group tax, that, that's good for me. And then I'll just try to set up a call with him. And Got it. Hopefully, can you just do my application over the phone? Or do yeah, I have to get on I mean, he'll send a you, computer? Yeah, he'll send you a link. Um, okay. It's best if you have an iPad or a computer because... Okay. He, there's stuff that you have to submit to him. So you have to submit, um, if you're on payroll, you have to submit your W-2s, if you're a 1099 employee. So he'll ask you for all those records. Okay. It's a big list. So we could do it as quickly as, as you want, or we could take time. It's, it's all based on your timeline. Okay, cool. If you want to get pre-approved pretty quick,
quick, the sooner you get those the paperwork over to him, the sooner we'll get you pre-approved. Perfect. Yeah, I'd love to just like knock that out first, yeah. you know, just so we're not wasting each other's time, right? right. Like, let me just yeah. get um, yeah, if you took put us in touch, I will uh, I'll text you my email. Let's just get that portion of it, I, I guess, rolling because right. that analogy about the wallets it makes it a lot of it resonates with me. Yeah, like, it's a yeah, ton of sense. yeah, I didn't think of it that way. Yeah. So yeah, I'll so you, but you mentioned your thing about renewing your lease. If, if, in the event that you know um, we don't find something, I mean, I, I kind of I don't want to be homeless, so yeah, right. I got to right. figure out. Right. You know, yeah. I got to figure out if I want to buy something, and then so you know, it ends in the next three months, right? Okay. So like, I have to figure out. I feel like that's enough time to get a prequal and hopefully find something because I think right. normally it takes like thirty days to buy a property. Is that right? Typically, uh, an escrow will run you thirty days, forty-five days. With Oscar, we can close even twenty days, oh, depending wow. depending on how quickly we move. Okay. Um, once in escrow, it just again depends on how quickly both you, me, and the other and the sellers move when it comes to inspections and termite and all that stuff. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. There's 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 a a different process. Once we're in escrow, we'll sit down again and I'll run you through the whole process of escrow and I'll set expectations because there's a lot that gets involved in escrow. Got it. Okay. So yeah. Any uh, any questions for me? No. I mean, it's funny. I, I don't. You don't know until you you are faced with the situation. So yeah. I don't know what I don't know at this point. But yeah, I think that. Based on, <clears throat> from what I understand, I, I like, I should be talking to Oscar. Um, I'll send you some things that I like, some yeah. buildings. I mean, just sure. give you a general Absolutely. idea. Like, hey, I like these amenities. I like this location. I can see your style. See what yeah. kind of style you like and mm -hmm. more modern or whatever it is. Yeah. And if yeah. things pop up that you see that you think I might like, I mean, I'd love to go look at property, but I mean, I want to make sure I can also afford it too. Right. So, I mean, you know, do you, should I go check out open houses? Should I wait for, I talked to, for, until I talk to Oscar? What would you recommend? Look, I, I would wait for now. Okay. Um, I mean, you could do what, what you want to do. Uh -huh. And uh, if you do go look at open houses, just let me know. And uh, I'll give you a couple of my cards. That way, okay. if you do go, number one thing they're going to ask you is if you have an agent, you just give them my card. Um, just it. FYI, I don't make, I don't, I don't sign any contract with my buyers. Okay. Um, if you want to work with me, that's great. If you don't, like, We'll shake on it. We'll be friends, and that's that. Okay. Is it so? How much does it, do I um, have to pay you to be my agent? You don't pay me nothing, so you don't have to pay me anything. The seller will pay me my 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 commission. Oh, so, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So basically, when it comes to to me, I'm, I'm the seller pays me, so you don't have Got to pay it. me anything. Any agent that tells you that you have to pay him, just run for the hills because the the seller will pay our commission. So just oh, be, okay. be aware of any agent that's sold you otherwise. Interesting. Yeah. And, okay. And just you know, just so you know, um, everything that we discussed today, everything that we will discuss in the future, if we work together, is all strictly confidential. It will stay between us and the lender. Okay. Uh, and I just wanted to lay down on the table and and let you know that I'm looking out for your best interest. Awesome. Um, I'm here to, to to walk you through the whole process. I'm here to look out for you and uh, take care of you when it comes to your home buying process. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I'm glad I, I'm glad I asked because yeah, I thought. <clears throat> you know, I, I've talked to people in the past that they, they work with the, the listing agent because they didn't want to pay a commission, but then I like, I didn't, so I didn't know how that works. I, I'm glad you explain that to me. Look, there's, there's buyers that are, are seeing a loophole. I wouldn't call it a loophole and they're going straight to the listing agent. Uh -huh. I highly adv advise against that because if you think about it, they're working for the seller. Right. So, so you imagine you sense. coming in and you're like, Hey, can you represent me? I mean, who realistically, who do you think? he's looking out for right his, that's a good his point. buddy yeah. his client his number one client which is the listing yeah so just be careful when it comes to that um if, if you are going to go that route i mean just i look if you if you don't work with me i'm more than happy to help you out and give you my two cents cool. if you want to run anything by me like i said i'm here to help out awesome um and work with, with buyers like yourself i i love working with first-time home buyers because it's a whole process and you sure. have to be very very careful so if you go straight to the listing agent you just just be aware that they're looking out for the seller's best interest. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't. And think stuff that you could disclose, they totally, could go right yeah. down to the seller. Yeah. What if you told them that you know you can go up to a certain number, and now they take that to the seller? Sure. It, yeah, it that's can a get good you point. In, a, in a heated trouble. So yeah. Sure. Okay. Just well, something perfect. to think about. Just yeah. Something to think about. I think I'll just hold off then. I, let's let's get me in touch with Oscar for and sure. like, let's let's start with the let's do it the right way. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice meeting you, man. Yeah. Thanks. Take care. That was good. That was really, really good. good. So. Yeah. Um, I'll leave it on. Um, so see how see how when I first I didn't jump into real estate right away. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, man, how you been? Like, dude, finally we get to meet each other. Like, yeah. shit. Like, 
But I talked about where you're from. Mm -hmm. um, I liked your watch. Uh, I could have like said like, dude, cool shoes, dude. Yeah. Like whatever it was, uh -huh. like something to relate and just talk about something before real estate. For sure. Because guess what it does? And it made you, even though we're role playing, it made you feel like I saw you. You're like, oh, oh. a little bit more at ease. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, this guy's they, whatever it is. Yeah. Even if if you would have mentioned a place that I've never been to, I would have been like, oh, dude, that's sick. I've never been that. I've always wanted to go to that place. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, what do you recommend? Like, if I go, is there like a spot that I should go out to? Is right. there a spot that I should stay at? And there'll be like, oh, dude, I recommend this place. So I just have them talking first. Yeah, deactivate. Deactivate the whole like, oh, this uh, this dude's just trying to sell me on something. Sure. Just be like, oh, this dude actually wants to be friends with, me. and see how I finished it. I'm like, hey. Putting it out there, I don't sign anything with anyone. Like, if you want to work with me, great. If not, we'll just shake it and be friends. Like, I'm not, I'm not here to make enemies. I'm not here to make you sign something and hold you against it. Like, I'd rather you be happy and buy the home that you want than have to work with someone you don't have, you don't want right. to. So, right. So, and they're like, oh shit, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Like, because every other agent is throwing a contract. Like, Can you sign here? Can you sign yeah, here? Can sure. You sign here. So, um, anything that you noted or anything that. Uh, no, I thought it was really good. I like the part they said about the wallet, and I also like the part about the dual agency too. Right. I I've been asked that question before. I didn't really didn't know how to answer that. Yeah. Right. But that was a good answer. To yeah. Kind of the wallet it. analogy I always use. I'm yeah. like, imagine going shopping without your wallet. Mm -hmm. Like you have no idea how yeah, much you, you have. Know. Yeah. Like you know. So. Um, cool. All right. Sit over there because I already got oh. it. My dick or my nice. You be. Whatever you want. Be okay. Um, you're the buyer, so you're, I mean, you're the seller, so you're going to sit there. Okay, cool. So I'm the, but I'm the agent walking in. Okay, we already walked the house. You already saw everything. Okay, see, that's it. That's I like that. Okay, yeah. I walk in. So walk, walking in, first thing is like, hey, hey, Peter, nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Wow, dude, this is a nice house. Thank you. It's pretty cool. Uh, how long have you been in this place? I've been in this place for 12 years. Jesus. Yeah, I built it. Really? Yes. Well, show, show, before we sit down, like show me a little bit of uh, you know, the, the house. Yeah, let's check, check it out. out. Check yeah. it out. So we do a full tour. We'll do a full tour. Whenever you're doing the tour and you run through the kitchen, if you have a listing presentation, put it on the kitchen uh, table. You always want to do that. You want to revert back to the <clears throat> kitchen table because you want a place to sit. You don't, the last thing you want to be is like holding your presentation all throughout the house and then you get to like the room and you guys all of a sudden are talking about like listing it and you're like in the bedroom and you're like, um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's like you always want to put in the kitchen table if they if they can see you do that Then they'll realize that and they're like, oh, he left all his stuff in it You can be once you go through it and be like, hey, is it is it cool if I set this here? Yeah While yeah, we sure, tour? Yeah. yeah, while we tour, yeah, yeah while we tour, yeah, yeah. <laughs> show me so perfect you walk through the house blah 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 we sit down Okay, perfect Okay, well, got this here, all right So what do you what do you think of uh, what do you think of my house? <laughs> Peter, you definitely have a great house. I mean, I, I can already see it. We're not gonna have any issues selling this. I mean, awesome. it's a beautiful house. Um, I have to congratulate you on it. And uh, but first of all, I want to say thank you for taking this meeting with me. I really appreciate your time. I know your time is very, very valuable, uh, and my time is as well. Um, I have other appointments as well, but I just want to say thank you very much. I am giving you my full attention, and I want to learn more about you. Like, why are you looking to sell? So you know. Right now, I feel like it's definitely a seller's market. I want to take advantage of that. Um, okay. You know, none of us have a crystal ball, so we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I do know that today that people are getting kind of a premium for their home, mm -hmm. and uh, to some extent, although I built this home and I've been in here for twelve years. Wait, you built this home? I was involved with the building. I didn't personally build it, but I was involved with the architect. So yeah, everything you see here was so like designed. I custom designed home. This is a custom, custom home. Yeah, this wow. is per what I, my vision was so it's pretty cool i love living here in del mar you know it's a great spot to be i mean definitely i mean it, when you when you have that opportunity um and i was at a position where i had some time to develop this home and really mm -hmm. focus my energy on it that's why I, like i put this together and it's all based on homes that i've toured in the past so i got a lot of inspiration um to, to put this home together yeah so I, yeah I, I, I could see it kind of here and there like the inspiration what was your main inspiration for the property I, you know, um, for me, it's all about light and open spaces. I want a lot of natural light. I want a lot of open spaces. I don't like clutter. I like kind of a clean <clears> look that <throat> you can see it like throughout. It's pretty modern. Um, but you know, I, to me, I, I wanted it to feel like you're in, you know, um, 
a home in California that has uh, very clean lines and very very modern and cut to and also timeless, right? Like right. for example, like you'll notice that throughout my house, I didn't do anything that's really like obnoxious or something that somebody else couldn't. It's kind of like a blank slate, right? So I can like, totally see that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. I didn't put in some gaudy marble or some you know some weird appliances. Like this home, I designed it also to sell to make it actually to make your job easier because I thank you. Yeah, you're the first seller that says yeah, that. That's exactly. Awesome. Because I really wanted to have something that. It wasn't just for me, right? Because when I built this home, I knew inevitably I one day would sell it. Right. So I wanted something that was um, kind of a blank slate. I, um, you know, I've sold a couple of homes before, so I'm super familiar with the process. That was my next question. If it was your first home sale, I mean, yeah. I mean, I could tell just by the way you're talking about it that you've done this before. Yeah, I've done this before. I, I think that in the past. Um, I invested too much or I did something that was too personal that it was harder for me to sell it. So when I built this home, I was like, I wasn't going to make the same mistakes. I right. wanted it kind of something that was timeless and something that uh, a lot of people would like, you know, colors right. that they would like really kind of neutral. So definitely, you know, um, very cool. You know, I, I, I think that you make those mistakes investing too much in your home on this home. Yeah. I didn't do that. I, I think I did it, you know, just based on my experiences in the past. You learn wow. through pain, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, Look, you, you, you kind of hit the, the nail on the head. We're definitely in a, in a very hot seller's market. Sure. And uh, it's great that you're taking advantage of it because like you said, you just, we just never know what the future will hold. Right. Um, if we knew, then, then we'd probably be sitting in a home 10 times as big as this one, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, shoot. Right. Uh, or we'd have like 10 of these, right? Right. So anyways, um, I, I don't know if you got a chance to look at the um, the listing presentation that I left you that I emailed you. I did, I okay. did. It was uh, it's a great listing presentation. You know, uh, I've met with a couple agents. You okay. know, honestly, a lot of them they do promise me the world. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I think that's like kind of maybe it's standard, but like I get promised a lot with these li listing presentations, and you know. Um, I, I can do that if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the type of agent that I am. I try to be very real. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, you've, you've met with other agents. Every sure. agent is different. Every agent brings some different to the table. Yeah. Um, did you, did, when you went through the listing presentation, did you have any questions, anything that popped up that you're like, ah, I, I'm going to ask Manuel this when he gets here? Well, I think that you guys have like probably some of the best marketing I've seen. I, you know, although it is Thank like you. a, a, yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. Actually, that's the reason why you're here today. We take a lot of pride in our marketing. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it shows. It, yeah. it totally shows. And I mean, I think a home like this, we're, you know, we're at a price point that I, is considered to be the uh, the upper price point, and I think that it's very much a niche market. So I need a niche realtor. What what makes you feel that you could sell my home better than um, um, some of the other agents here in yeah. in San Diego? Well, look, uh, uh, um, as I said, we we are agents that take very much pride in our marketing. Okay. I've been in the business for for a little over three years. Okay. And listing is what I do. I, uh, okay. real estate is what I do. I have a team that's just an amazing team. We hold open houses. We do everything that comes with, with, with marketing. Um, typically what I like to do when it comes to a listing is I like to set it in three different stages. Okay. First being the pre-marketing stage. And, and at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to do the pictures. We're going to do the video, cinematic footage. You probably saw it on there. I don't know if you got a chance to look at my website or the videos on YouTube. They're just just amazing videos mm -hmm. and we do all that we bring in one of the top uh, uh, photographers in San Diego to take just amazing pictures and we make it seem like like we're selling a lifestyle we're saying we're selling a picture we're selling you know kind of uh, not just a home but a lifestyle up here being in Del Mar okay um, you're really close to, to one Paseo you're really close to the ocean and we want to show we want to to show that through the video and through the pictures as well right so that's something that that nowadays even though we're in a hot seller's market, a lot of agents will just take a picture and throw it on the MLS and you know they might sell it, but we want you, we want to get you the most amount of money for your house. Right, right. So having said that, even though it's a hot seller's market, we still go all in. So in stage one, we'd be pre-marketing your home, mm -hmm. doing all this information. Obviously we, we, we sign a contract first, right? Uh, and we can get to that as well. But um, there's three stages. We do that, we do the coming soon, and then we list it. Once Got we it. list it, we will uh, we can go into open houses, which I don't know if you're open to that. Okay. To holding open houses. So I got the CMA yeah. that you sent over, and you know it's it's uh, it's a lot of information, and the problem is that I know they can be confusing, it's right? Confusing, right? Yeah. Like, um, well, the problem is like I'm not seeing something like really comparable to my home, and the prices are kind of all over, right? Yeah. Like, 
I think that, you know, this house being over 6,000 square feet is unique. You know, it's, there's, there's not too many of them on, you know, that are on, especially on the market right now that I've noticed that are going to be comparable to this. So like in terms of list price, like, did you have something in mind? Well, I kind of, to, to throw it back at you, you know, you've seen the CMA. Uh -huh. um, I have a number in mind. I don't know if, if you had something that you were comparing it to. Sure. Um, did well, you how about a, you tell me your number first? I'll tell you mine. Oh, there we go. Siri. Uh, well, look, I, I would feel after seeing your house, seeing the upgrades that you've done, comparing it to other properties, um, I would feel comfortable listing your house at $2 million. Okay. Um, we, could, we could list for higher. Okay. Uh, and that's fine with listing, uh, listing higher. Okay. Uh, let's, let's do $1 million. So I'd feel comfortable listing your house at a million dollars. Okay. And that's fine if, if we go higher. I, I have no issue with that. The only problem with that is that we're missing out on buyers looking up to a million dollars. So if we price it just a tad below a million dollars, we just open up our, our, our pool of buyers like enormously. Really? So keep in mind that, 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 that when buyers are, uh, they start their search online. Of course. And of course, just like anything, if you go on Zillow, if you go on Redfin, if you go on the Compass site, there's, there's uh, brackets. Yeah. And people, when, it, when you get up to a million dollars, usually the brackets are 20, uh, increments of 25,000 or 50,000 or 100,000. Right. Um, typically, well, anyone looking up to a million, you know, we want to get those people. And you might, you, might, you might think like, oh, they can't afford it if they're looking up to a million because I want to sell it for way more. Mm -hmm. the, the, the most important thing here is to get them through the door. Sure. Once we get them through the door and we get them to fall in love your, with your property, I mean, who knows? They might be pre-approved for 1.4, but they only want to go up to a million. Sure. So they're only looking for homes up to a million dollars. So we want to get those buyers through the door. The more buyers we get through the door, the more offers we'll get, the higher we're, we're going to sell your home. Got it. So, okay. Well, that makes sense. I mean, back to your point, like I do want to get in front of a, like a big audience, right? And right. if you think that pricing... What what price went a million on the nose or like nine nine nine? I would I would shoot for a, a nine 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 okay. nine nine eight nine nine five. Okay. I know some people are specific with numbers, like yeah. when it comes to like their their you know yeah their likes with numbers. So yeah yeah. So if I'm being honest with you, I like in my mind, I felt like this home's worth one point one five. Okay. So we're not far off. We're about one hundred fifty grand. Like you're you're saying you want to be, but I think that um, using your strategy, you know, what do you think that we could? If we list it at let's say at nine nine five, right? Right. What is the likelihood you think we can get where I want to be? Let's say it's one point one. Do you think that that's just too big of a jump? Like, do you think we should list at the higher price point, or do you think we're going to bring in more people? If I want to, if I want to, you know, sell because right. it, at us, I know I already you you sent me that net sheet by the way. Yeah. Love that. You like net that? Sheet. It's super helpful. And just looking at the net sheet, I know that you know I want to sell it like. To get what I want, I need to sell at 1.1. Okay. To net out what I want on what this. What you want, got it. Right? Yeah. So, well, do you I'm, think that I can get 1.1 having listed at 995? Definitely, and that's what I'm here for. Okay. With our marketing campaigns that we're gonna hold, with our flyering that we're gonna do, because we'll flyer all around the community. Mm -hmm. Remember, your neighbors, they, they, they love family members and, and friends who live close by. So the more that we can reach the neighbors when it comes to flyering, uh, the more they'll spread the word. Not only that, but we'll do geo-targeted ads, okay. uh, social media ads to buyers uh, out in the market looking specifically for homes just like yours. Okay. So we can do that. Now, when it comes to the price, uh, I, there's something that I like to say where it's like, I'd rather list low and sell high than list, lo list high and sell low. Right. And if this were five years ago, we'd be having a different conversation. Different because, conversation, by the way. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, like, no, in my experience, like I would say, well, no, I want to list at 1.1, but... I, I know that if my house sits on the market, like that's not a good look for me. You don't want to burn so, the like, market. So days. like I've learned that because I've, I've experienced that in the past, having right. sold homes. Like, so like I want to strategize with you to see what, what's going to bring us in the most offers and get, get me to that 1.1 because that's what's important to me. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's why I'm going back and forth. Like I've met with other agents and other, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. They've, they told me I should list at 1.2. I've heard one that, you know, said that we should list at, you know, a million fifty thousand. So like I, I've met with two other agents. One said one point two. The other one said a uh, million fifty thousand. Got it. And then you're telling me to be below a million. So like in terms for like from a listing perspective, you you've come at me with the lowest number as far as <laughs> list price. Not that not that I'm like holding that against you, but I'm just telling you like yeah. you're my you're you're the last person I'm meeting with, and like so I, like I've done I've done this dance with a couple other realtors. Got you it. know what I mean? And I just want to know who's gonna net me out. The, 
what I need to net out on this property. Yeah. And, uh, now, and I just want to implement the best strategy. And right. I mean, I'm looking for you for that, you know? Right. And, 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 and thank you for that. Um, well, look, there's a lot of agents that could come in here and tell you 1.4, 1.3. I could tell you that. Mm -hmm. I could be like, I'll sell it for 1.3. Um, but the reality is I'd rather be real with you up front mm -hmm. and, and, and tell you kind of the real numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to list at 1.1, we can always do that. We can okay. list at 1.1 if you feel comfortable doing that. But if we, if we go that route, I would love for us to list it on a range. So okay, listing, a range, what's so, that? So Never listing it on a range would be listing it um, anywhere from 995 to 1.1. Oh, okay. Now, when we list it on a range... Uh, everything that the, the general public will see on, on Zillow and Redfin will show the higher number. We'll show oh. the 1.1. 1. 1. The, oh. the, the range is really uh, uh, more towards the uh, agents looking on the MLS. So that range will only show up on the MLS. Got it. And, and now, why do we put a range? So we can have more reach. Even though it's at 995 to 1.1, 1. 1, agents, when they type in a search for their clients on the MLS, this home will pop up. Oh, okay. Now keep in mind also a, a range is, is, is just a range. We don't have to accept any offer that comes in that you're not feel that you don't feel comfortable right. with. So if we get an offer within the range, that doesn't automatically mean that your home's going to sell for that price. Right. Yeah. I'd have to agree to it. Right. So okay. my, my whole job is to market it extremely well and get you the highest number. And my whole goal is to get you over 1.1. 1 .1. Right. But we'll, we'll, we'll let the market dictate your, your, your home, your, the price for your home, okay. what your home will sell. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, with that being said, you know, let's say we agree to a listing price of whatever, whether it's a range or a certain yeah. dollar amount. Um, what's your commission structure? Because that, that's just like also helps me net it out. So the net sheet you sent me had a commission of 5%. Yeah, so so we actually typically do six percent. Oh, okay. Um, but look, the market's hot. We know that. We know there's a lot of agents that are out there working. So in this case, we, we would be willing to do a five percent, okay. and that would include all of our marketing, uh, all of our flyering, okay, everything that we do leading up to your home sale, and even through escrow. That's why we're doing the, the five percent. Our time is 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 very valuable, just like yours, mm -hmm. and um, and we respect that, and um, that's why we're we're leaning more towards the five percent now. Um, if we do come across the buyer, I will be willing to go down to a 4%. So meaning if I bring in the buyer, we can okay. do 4%. Oh, okay. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, I, I've had other agents that came through and they, they were at 4%. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of agents that will even do like a 1% on the list side. Yeah. Which is, 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 is that just goes to show you, tell you how, you know, what their service is like and what, how highly they think of themselves. Right. Okay. I do, we do, we take really a lot of pride in what we do mm -hmm. and our, like I said, our time is very valuable and the money that we're going to put into marketing your home, I don't care if it's a hot seller's market. I could probably throw, take pictures with my phone, throw it on the MLS and it'll sell, but I don't care about doing that. I care about listing your property to the right buyers mm -hmm. that are willing to pay the highest number for this house, Got for it. the house. Yeah. And I, that, that makes sense. You know, like, uh, I, I like obviously nice things you know i can see that right like yeah. so like what you kind of get what you pay for you right. know what i mean and like i wasn't looking more at the those one percent agents just because you know I, I just think you get what you pay for but you know that four percent is that person i think was uh, with berkshire hathaway how do you guys compare to them look berkshire hathaway i have a lot of respect for him um it's a great uh, brokerage i have nothing but good things to say um but we're with compass and we're we are the leading uh, we have the leading edge in, in technology when it comes to marketing. And in today's world, um, everything has to do with marketing, especially digital marketing. Mm -hmm. And that's where we exceed at the most Okay. when it comes to social media. And I, I don't know if you've got a chance to visit my website or my Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all over the, online. You can find me on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on my website. I am literally all over, even TikTok, which I don't know if, you, if you're on TikTok. But anyways, that's... A huge part of our marketing campaign, along with um, flyering, okay, and depending on on how much you know how much. Um, well, this is depending on the home price, but we can even put you in a magazine. Here are some examples of magazines that we've been on, and I brought a few examples of the uh, print marketing that we have as well. Got it. Okay. No, it looks like it, the marketing side. It looks like so far it's the best I've seen. I'll be honest with you. Thank you. Know, you. It's really, it truly yeah. is like the best I've seen. Um, you know, I would, I would love it if you brought a buyer. I don't know if you have any buyers currently for this house, you know, like 
if you have anybody in mind. Um, but you know, I'm looking to get this thing sold as, as quickly as possible. Right. As you can see, like most of my stuff has moved out. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, if, if we list it today, what's the average day? Well, like how many days on market do you think we're going to have? It, it's completely up to you. I mean, we can list it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Of course, I like to spend at least a week or two weeks to pre-market it the home. And that way, many okay. agents, I can spread the word to the to local agents. Okay. And I'll shoot them an email. I'll shoot up to uh, 600 emails mm -hmm. of the top local real estate agents that have buyers for this house. Got it. I, I, I'm, you know, I have buyers, uh, maybe not for this house, but I can find them. Right. And within Compass, um, the brokers that we're at, we can already start spreading the word within our own brokerage. Okay. Um, and my whole goal here is to find the buyer, right? Right. Save you a little bit of money. I make a little bit more, and I have complete control of the of, of when it comes to the sale. Sure. Going through escrow. Sure. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. I mean, it, it all sounds really good. I think um, you know, it, 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 when we can uh, agree to a listing price, and I think we should talk more about that. Let's let's do this thing but oh, yeah. uh, I just want to I want to get it in front of the most amount of people right um, you know let's I, I'm open running open houses because I think it's all about getting as many people through as possible right I, I don't want to keep this house closed up to anybody so if you need me to disappear for the afternoon yep. anytime like I'm, I'm open to doing that okay you're gonna put it on lockbox or what are we doing uh, I typically I, I put it on lockbox okay. um, but I do every single showing it's either me or my team I have a team uh, of th uh, two other people okay um, and we're gonna be you know consistently marketing this home okay and working for you um, but I will put on a lockbox I will try it either me or one of my team members will be here at every single showing okay cool that's um, that's important yeah that's great mm -hmm. yeah okay well perfect I, I do you have any questions for me um, no honestly you know if everything sounds good um, I can email you a copy of what a um, of the listing agreement okay and if everything looks good we can sign it and the sooner we get the ball rolling the sooner I can start with the marketing okay you know, there's there's a there's a ramp up to the marketing and I have to go in there and design and we want to take pictures and we want to do a video which we can always uh, schedule that as well perfect yeah. perfect well uh, yeah that sounds great I will uh, I'll look forward to receiving your your listing agreement and uh, I think that we should uh, let's list at your 995 and let's give that a shot uh, let's see how many offers we can drum up in the first, you know, couple of weeks. Let's let's be low and sell high. So I think okay. that strategy is better. Um, I'll give you as much access to the home as possible. I know that's that's important for you. So I want your you and your team to run as many open houses as as you can. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah. If he would have pushed back on that one 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 one, what I would what I would have said is I would have thrown that range. If he's like, no, I want that one one. What I would have said is okay. That's fine. We can list it at one one. Why don't we try this? Why don't we list it as a coming soon at one one and see how much activity we get? Oh, okay. So a coming mm -hmm. soon, That's the general great. public will be able to see that coming soon, and depending that way you won't burn market days. Great, great strategy. So we can do how that. Is, so you can see the activity on the listing. I'm assuming. It just depends on how many phone calls I get. Oh, I so see. the way the market's at right now, we can list it for a week at one one, mm -hmm. and I can I can report back to you how many calls I get, how many showings that I got requested, point. and depending on that, we can list that one one. If we don't get a lot of activity on it, I suggest we go that that nine nine five price. Do you feel comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So cool. you're 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 getting you're testing the, the market no matter what. You're getting that listing because you're agreeing to his price. You're agreeing his commission. If you would have pushed back on that four percent. I would have been like, look, for the amount of work that we do, we, we charge five percent, but I can get you that four percent. That's fine. If I if I buy if I find the buyer. I saw that. I yeah. like that. Okay. And we can do that by the way. So if we find the buyer, oh, we, we can, we, we can oh, lower it to four percent. No less than four percent. No. Yeah. yeah. So but I was like kinda of playing a little softball, you know, because I wanted to be like yeah. So we could we could like to keep it going, right? Yeah, like yeah, talk yeah. about that. So like some may, some people might be dicks. No, I want four percent. I heard it's lower, blah blah blah. You know, but I think that we, we offer a lot here and there's a reason why Compass doesn't let us. You have to go, don't you? I do have to go. No worries. Okay, well, I want to do this again. Yeah, we can I do this again. need to fix a lot of stuff. <laughs> no, you're good. You're Read good. your like, books. I think I started reading today. Good. <laughs> good. I, I finished 15 hours of... Um, we can we can stay for your um, role play if you want. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, um, dude, you, read your books. Um, we can follow up. We can we can chat tomorrow if you want. Yeah, um, I don't know what your week looks like, but I I'd be down to kind of meet up. Yeah. And, 
Let's let's meet up again and we can we can redo this again. Yeah, if, if every week, two times a week or something like that, I'd be like, and we if, could, like that's like the only way. So also before you leave, I wanna do um, weekly team meetings. Um, <coughs> you know, it doesn't have to be in person, we can do it over a Zoom call yeah, or a phone sure. call. I would like in person at least at least once a month. Just so we can do shit like this or okay. we can just see each other face to face. Um, but other than that, I want, uh, mon or how are your Mondays? Mondays are swamped for me. I'm getting Tuesday for, for what? For like a, uh, I don't want it to be more than like 45 minutes. Oh, like 45 like, minute like, like, weekly like a meeting. meeting. Okay. I could do like a, any day around like whatever, four thirty. I can be. Okay. Any, any day. But we can do like a zoom call yeah, or a yeah, phone yeah. call. Zoom so call. anytime. So why don't we try? Mondays are your swamp. Or, I'm sorry, uh, mornings are swamp time. Huh? Mornings, every morning on Monday, like I'm just busy for pretty much the whole fucking day. And, okay. Like I could do it later. In, I could do end of the day Monday. We could do like a 4.30, 5 o'clock Monday. I could do that every day. Your Mondays are changed kind of? My, my week changes, so it, I mean, I, 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 I we can go. We can go by your schedule. Days. We can do like later in the day and we can go by your schedule. Okay. Cool? Yeah. Awesome, man. All right. And then once a month we can meet in person, however, depending on your schedule. Dude, yeah, I mean, okay. like, I think I want to start putting out like a lot of marketing to Savina and stuff like that, and just yeah. like learning what you know and like dialing that in. So maybe more, I'd maybe meet twice a month if we can. Yeah, yeah. Would, I mean, it'd be I, better I, for me. And I'm open to meet like twice a week too. Okay, like myself if anything. Yeah, and I'm, we can I'm do trying to ramp up this thing. If you're from home, home, we can do Zoom calls, yeah, and we I can do all this yeah, shit. Yeah, I really Zoom don't calls. care as long as we just kind of like. Yeah, role play or do something like and that will really, really, it'll it'll help me too. This. Yeah, I, I really want to do this. Cool, man. Dude, I'm so happy for you guys. I'm happy for the team. I'm excited. Dude, I am excited. I'm, I'm excited, super excited too. I'm fucking pumped, dude. And this shit even gets me more pumped. Just right? going through the motions. It's amazing. Dude, it's I've super been, helpful. You, sometimes we get it rusty is. with this shit. No, so. totally. Well, it helps sharpen yeah. everything. Sharpens your wits. Sharpens yeah. like your yeah. the objections that you might come against. And you're like, fuck, well, what would I'm I say to that? listening to both of you guys. I'm like, oh, that, like, okay. He says something see good, how and then you said something good. And then it's like, okay, I can put, like... But see how it, so when he when he says shit, I'm like, oh yeah, it's crazy, yeah, huh? Yeah, it's so confusing. Yeah, yeah, see, I mean, it's see confusing that. sometimes, huh? That's yeah. what I'm here for. I'm here to help out with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm here to ease that. your mind. I'm here to help you out through it. Mm -hmm. And just be more be more like real when it comes to talking. Like if you lose your friend, but obviously not your friend, still no, yeah. being professional and staying always in, in the pocket, dude. To stay always stay in the pocket. Try and take control of the conversation. There's there's clients where they'll. I think that's what I don't know how to take. I kind of lose control. Yeah, that's what I noticed. Yeah, yeah. because I tell you something, you're like, you try to res you try to like yeah, please I, me. You try yeah, to please like. That's what it oh yeah, is. yeah, we can do it. Be like, you know, I, I say I listen to you. I, I I'm hearing a bit, but let's do this. Yeah, I'm hearing. I I agree. I'm hearing. It, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. we can we can work more on it. Yeah. All right, man. All right, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, swing by my open house, bro. I will. You get, we I'll can try do a little to role tomorrow. play. I'll act like you're going to buy that fucking thing. I know. I'm really like, <laughs> right? I, I got cash in the bank. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> hey, guys. So that's a wrap for the 2022 business planning for the MS Group. Honestly, I had a blast. As you saw, day one was uh, was great, or part one was great. Uh, we had Oscar Gassum, a lender. We had uh, Sammy that's working for Title come in, and they went through a lot, added a ton of value to our meeting and our business planning. We went through goal setting. Uh, we really went through mostly everything, and today was, was – uh, was different. It was uh, a lot of fun because we were role playing, as you saw in the videos. This was part two or day two of the business planning uh, for the group, and we went through role playing when it came to uh, how to talk to um, to buyers, how to set expectations, and we also uh, touched base on listings and how to set expectations when it comes to the listing side. Because even though it's a hot seller's market, there's still things that that, that need to get done, and and uh, part of our whole game plan is marketing. So. Anyways, that was the, the 2022 business planning for the team. I want to say thank you for everyone who stopped by. And most of all, I want to say thank you also to Peter Shelton, who is a team member on, on, on the group, and Naveed Kayat as well. I'll link their info down below, their Instagram as well, so you guys can go ahead and, and, and hit the follow. I'll link the website. And uh, hopefully you got some value out of this video. I, I Like I said, I enjoy putting them together. And I want to bring you guys along to... Um, 
to the business planning. This is real estate 2022. It's a whole different uh, ball game out there. Uh, we're, in, we're in the San Diego market and it's very competitive when it comes to uh, the list side as well as the buy side. So there's a lot of, lot of good agents out here and you, we kind of have to set ourselves apart and what makes us different here at the MS Group. Um, and we're here at Compass. We're in the Del Mar office at One Paseo. Um, we're always here to help. If you need a resource regarding real estate, um, give us a call. Uh, we're always happy to lend a, a second opinion or always happy to help you in your home buying or home selling process. We are very mobile. We, we work all over California and uh, we're always here to help. Uh, our main, re, uh, our main uh, uh, location here is in San Diego and this is where we work out of. So um, hopefully you got some value out of this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like, hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate all of you guys. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. If you're planning for 2022, I hope you are cr you're gonna crush it. Just look at these videos, role play with your team, and uh, make it fun. At the same time, make it fun because it's all about having fun. If not, then then uh, and what are you doing this for? It's uh, we want to make money and have fun while we do it. So, anyways, take care, guys, and I'll see you next year. Peace.